Here's a review I thought I wouldn't be doing. T Man 978 Chill Review. Hello, everyone. T Man 978. I'm about to review Transformers Generations War for Cybertron Trilogy HasLab Unicron. Special shout out to Matt the Bot Supplier. He helped me in getting this because he helped me get into I was able to pay him later. And um, just to let y'all know up front, I put all this together. I didn't film myself putting these rings together. Everything comes pretty much unassembled. I did everything, all the prep. I'm pretty sure y'all watched other people, and if you haven't, I'll find some videos. But the packaging as well, I'm going to send, send y'all over to my friend, Robot Gang Number One. He did a nice unboxing of this. He shows you, he went through the whole thing of the packaging, the whole turnaround, and he pulled out everything out of the box so you can see that. So I'll, I'll link that so you can watch it after you've watched this. Camera is about six feet away from me because that's the only way I can get this thing almost all the way on camera. But here we go. It's on its stand. I'm gonna let you get a nice full view of it before I start getting in close. The only way for you to see the whole thing is for me to do it like this. I keep getting interrupted. I want this video to be semi-perfect, so please don't mind the jump cuts. The only way for me to show this whole thing is for you, for me to have the camera that far back, but I'm about to zoom in now. Now that we're zoomed in, I'm gonna show off the things I can show off more easily, like this instruction booklet that it comes with. All color, all English, because this was only gonna be released in the United States at first. So, yeah, I think that's really cool. They have little quotes. Everything in the inside is in color. Rare. That hasn't happened for a long time. The last full color instruction manual I remember is Transformers Generations Jetfire. I can't remember if he was part of Thrilling 30, but this is cool. One thing to note that I'm not going to show here is they show you kind of in reverse that you need to open this up and push in this flap to get him to sit on that stand right there. You can't just do that straight out of the box. You get this stand right here. And on this stand, they have little ports that are five millimeter. This thing has a five millimeter peg on there. This peg is bigger, so you can only put that there. But this Autobot shuttle or escape shuttle that they had on Earth looks like this. It's not made out of a pliable plastic. It's a Transformers style normal hard plastic right there but you can see they painted the front and other details and yeah I always thought when I was watching the movie that this transformed into a robot like it really looks like those would be the arms the head will pop back and these will be the legs on here you may have noticed these tiny microscopic figures right there I'm trying to get as close as I can because they are tiny look at my pinky right there Rodimus Prime I'm gonna say that's Rodimus Prime because he's the same height as Galvatron here but he has the best details and I do think that they're in scale with the planet the planet doesn't have to be that huge they are big enough if this if Unicron was real they could actually fit in there and walk around comfortably and it would have multi levels and whatnot just like in the movie here they are from the back as you can see, they still have details on there. Only issue is the Galvatron has like that web in between the arms. So I'm guessing they were not able to. And if you really look at Rodimus, he sort of has the web. But because of the shape of his body, it's less noticeable. But yeah, they look good enough to me. They are tiny. Unless you have like super duper eyes, you will not be able to see these details in person anyway. Talking about skill. Here's Galvatron inside of the, the Maw right there. So yeah, this thing is like the size of the nerd candies or whatever. I'm kind of nervous about this because if it drops into that gear, he might he might just live in there. And you remember when Megatron grabbed this little Maw thing right there? It didn't even look this big right there in, in that shot. So his size changed from scene to scene. Unicron's head is packaged separately full of tech detail just like when they were up close in the movie 
looked like that would be a battery cover, but it's not. That's to move his eyes, which, yes, you cannot really see moving around inside of there unless his faceplate is off. You can see something's going on back there, but you don't know what. He has this opening mouth right here. Yum, 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 yum. And yeah, these actually rotate. It took me a while to figure this out. Because I was like, how the heck am I going to transform him with these horns on? They're big and they tried to make them more in the shape of his planet modes. Now, only thing I don't like about the head really is the bottom teeth aren't painted silver. I mean, I could do that myself. And they do kind of rub up against the upper teeth. And there is a spring-loaded gimmick up in there. Why? <laughs> if you have Primus, this is what it looks like floating around Cybertron. Really huge, probably bigger than it should be. And this is what the spaceship looks like next to him. So, yeah, I guess depending on what you're looking at. Like that chunky gun ship went into his eye, which was a huge ship. And this is a big ship. Those little people are too big to fit inside of here. And for a closer look, like look at that detail. Just like in the movie, they had those grinders right there that was making a chompy sound. <laughs> Covered in tech detail. Has the little effects ports all over. So you can see he's taking fire and whatnot. They're actually on the ring and whatnot. I was thinking, what if they had some Minicon ports? I don't believe I see any. So, yeah. I don't know about that compatibility right there. The stand is made up of three separate pieces. Now, I'll show off what that can do later. But his one of his gimmicks that he can do in this form is the opening and closing and closing maw or mouth and i like this controversy that blue inside of all this blue was originally painted yellow when they first or this color when they first showed it but they decided on this because of just color contrast and paint and whatnot i'm honestly like there is some yellow in there I'm thinking it would have looked cheaper if they kept it all yellow for me, to be honest. And this detail right there wasn't yellow in the movie. It was like a silver color. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm not mad about it, but I can do this all day. It's fun. Also, this moves in and out. Both of these. These spikes all over him. They're like rigid. They're not. They're pliable, but they're rigid and they keep their form. It's not like in the heat, they will like get soggy and droopy and whatnot. But just like the movie, they go all the way around. This thing is perfectly representative of what it looked like in the movie. This is how tall Fort Max is next to this mode on the stand. Even if it wasn't on the stand, I think it would still be taller. Cybertron is basically like Cybertron's moon compared to this Unicron. Super small, but it is heavy. It's about two or three pounds. You could probably fit four Unicrons inside of this big one. And to remind you of what this thing looks like, it wasn't a symmetrical planet. It's just a guy balled up into a shape with this cover right there. So he was only half, half of a shell former, unlike this thing, which is all the way a shell former. I think the only thing that you could see on him that's actually part of his robot mode is the back. These are his arms right there. The rest of this is just a shell to consume him. Bonus comparison. I'm going to have to transform this thing a couple more times. And then I can feel comfortable with filming it. But here's Unicron. Riding on Unicron. Yay. Transformation. 
This transformation sequence is highly edited, but worry not, citizen! The full transformation video was uploaded at the same time. Link in the description below. You can transform him with the ring on, but don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself at all. It's two halves. Basically, the best way to do this is by grabbing and twisting outward. We can get that and we can detach it right here. Lift this up out of here and repeat the process at the bottom. Down here, it connects, bend it, and then you can pull that apart. Do that right there. Grab here, pull that off. We're going to throw that to the side until we get him into robot mode, basically. Detach on both sides. Now we get started with the top of the planet. Basically, you need to Grip up under here, start detaching this, detach from the back, basically pull all of this away from there. It's overlapped and underlapped right there. Now that you've done that, we can take this piece, bring it up here, bend here, get that behind here tabs here separate this bring it behind there and this bends but just leave it that, like that for now this is going to be all dangling around and getting on your nerves basically same thing up here repeat that process essentially we're repeating this same process down here you need to find the good spot where you can grab right here grab that which Separated more than I wanted it to, to be honest. So basically, we need to grab and get all of this away from here. Then we can bend this, rotate that back there, separate it right here. We'll bring this in the front and bring all that in the front. And this is going to rotate where the orange part is back there. It may be different when we get there, but that's how I'm going to put it right now. Same deal. Now we're spinning it to where these spikes are in the back and you see the, the mouth is on the front. I'm going to unlatch this. Unlatch this. Then it is like over and under left right there I'm gonna break that apart right there bring it down for now it's over and under left bring that down same deal it's gonna be hard for me to show you this inside of here it's over and under left and this material that they use this plastic is like stretchable so just basically stretch that apart and get it down We can, this piece that I already detached, we can over and under let that right there. And over here, same process. These panels are dangling in my dead on way, so I can't really fully show you. But basically, get that, detach it right here, and let that come down. Now I'm gonna just. I'm rotating it this way so that this could fit on the sand this piece right here needed to be flipped back but we need to bring that actually forward and wrap it around to this and then we can bring that panel back bring these two halves back together and plug it back together as like basically one solid unit you could bring this back up, but it might fall down. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Now back to the back again, where this is. And these spikes, this row of spikes is again, and not the mouth. I'm going to detach here. Like kind of lift this up, which it was an over and under tab. Lift this up. Now that we get here, we can rotate it and bring this up here like that, basically. 
spinning it around halfway where you can see the mouth. This needs to detach from here and this needs to detach off of there to get it out of the way. I'm gonna do that same process over here. And now I forget where this go, I might have to adjust it later. But this needs to come down like this. And I'm gonna bring this down like that. Right here, I'm gonna move this out the way so you can kinda see right here. There is a thing right there attached to his crotch. I'm gonna pull this away from there. Now all of this is basically gonna be, it's gonna make this detach where I was trying to detach it. So now that's all dangling free. And we're gonna come back to that. Up here, we need to detach his arms. Sort of like he did in the movie. I'm going to bend it this way to detach that. That's the easiest way to get it detached. Detach this, and just like the movie, the hands are in there. So now, with all this stuff dangling in my daggone way, I'm gonna try to like shove it up under here to get out of my way momentarily. But basically, this arm, it needs to come up like this and plug in to the shoulder right here. Now we can rotate that safely now that that's plugged in. Don't rotate it without that being plugged in. I'm going to let these panels that keeps one to get in the way, I'm going to let that come down. Now we can kind of Get that plugged in. And there is a latch right here. Bring that out, pull it with your finger. Shut the arm down and it grabs onto the shoulder joint. Now that I've done that, pull that joint out right here. Grab this, pull it up, move it to the back. And then you can slide that down right here arm you can do this so you can get that epic reveal just like the movie basically we are collapsing this down and revealing the hand just like they did in the movie which is a cool touch we're gonna try that same stuff on this side the legs can they connect together I'm gonna just pull it apart not only is it connected together right there but This is grooved so that it can, it's a little tiny notch right there that attaches to here. Get that out of there. And now the leg can come down. And at this point, all this stuff is gonna be dangling about. Get this down basically to here. I want to make sure you see this. This was in this orientation. I'm basically bringing that down and getting that basically out of the way. But from here, you see these two things right here? This needs to rock in like this. This came loose. Rock in. And now this hinge right here needs to rotate downward and I'm going to rotate this this way and make sure that this hand gets all the way down on the inside all right full disclosure my camera went dead on me in the middle of that step and I went to sleep but like I was saying there's two holes right here and these two thick-ass pegs right there. Basically line that up 
and plug it on which when you get it right will be super secure now since this is all unraveling I'm gonna press all that back together now we can rotate to this part of the leg all right now the the stuff on the bottom by the ankle closer to the ankle make sure all these panels are positioned like this in this part right here make sure that that's curved in basically this piece right here this gangly pieces of all types of hinges and whatnot this needs to fold up like that and there is a peg right there in a hole right here when you fold this up flat it will give you more access to that peg I was pointing at that I can barely film then you lift it up and make it go into that peg hole I can yeah if you do it right it goes in there tight now this piece right here that's hanging down needs to rotate up like this and when you do that this part of the panel on the other side set of panels needs to slot in there and we need to rotate this around this one can come up because when it rotates around there's this little peg right here that needs to be grabbed by this peg that on and then there there's a peg right here that goes into this so once we do that we can straighten up the toe, straighten up the front toe, and then there is, I'm going to move up his little side skirts, hip skirts. I'm moving this up, and I'm bringing the butt flap down a bit. Move the leg out. He has another toe right here that comes out. Then we can move it forward at the hip. And what I just did was cleared the stand. Basically, it's kind of, there's a little, let me bring the camera closer. There's a little bump right here that this is sitting on besides being attached to the other leg. That's what I was talking about. But you see that little bump up close. Front of this mess, everything dangling down here, I'm gonna lift up and then rotate right here. Rotate it all the way around, have that back. I knocked his head off the side. No, I'm gonna just bring his horns up now. Basically, all of this is hanging down. We need to move this up, kind of get that latch in the place. Move this up, and then basically rotate things like this. This should be pegged in at the top, and we're gonna bring it up like this. Now we have two clips on both sides. This slides up and down. Make sure this is down. All right, there are these two sockets right there and these two pegs in the center of these two. They're like extra grips. We just need to get these two inside of there. So if this is low enough, you should be able to clip this into place and there's no easy way for me to film it. So you just have to go off of my description on that. I got it in the place. Let's see that on this side. We're making sure that's down. And these two clips hold the entire back together. It's like almost like the whole planet or half of the planet is on this back. And I might have to stand up for this one. Yeah, there we go. It's in there. Make sure this is all big. The clips do a good job, amazingly, but now we can lift these horns up. Have this dangling. I'm hoping this will make sense and you'll be able to see what the heck I'm doing. But what am I gonna do first? This is attached right here. I'm bending that out because it's, it's pegged right there. I'm pulling that peg out and straightening everything. So that's like one of the rings right there. So then we're gonna rotate this so that'll match up. And we're rotating this and bringing that down like that. 
Now, this part right here that pegs into his arm needs to come down. And this right here, I'm looking at it. This is gonna be his, the back of his wing right here. So that pegs into there and you have one wing done. Try to do that again. Hopefully it looks smooth. I'm gonna start down here and bring that up like that. Then I'm gonna unpeg this right here and make that straight. Then we can rotate this and it rotates here, down here, and we're gonna lift that up. Right there. Bring this peg that goes into his arm down, and we're gonna make it opposite of the other arm. So I'm putting this in the back. So this is gonna be his right wing. But we have both of them done, and to make it kind of symmetrical, I have this behind this. So I'm gonna do that same thing over here. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but now let's get him in his body. Basically, this right here is keyed so the wing can only go in one way. So it's shaped like that where it's flatter or comes in at the end. I can see that it goes in like this. Push it all the way until it's a light snap, and then we can bring that down. Same thing on the other side. So now, there he is. He is a full, complete, freaking monster beast robot. And I'm knocking my comparison robots down. Here's Unicron and all his majesty. Pretty sure y'all seen pictures online. I don't know how much detail I should be going in as far as spinning him around. They've been showing him up and down everywhere, but getting closer, you can see all that tech detail that was in the planet mode. Well, this is new detail because none of this is his planet. You already saw the face, so I shouldn't have to go into that. But the wings look like that. The legs in person don't bug me as much as I thought it would with all these crazy panels on there. Yeah. Like I meant to mention this in the beginning of the video, but this guy isn't meant to be a masterpiece Unicron. He's meant to be a War for Cybertron Generations figure. So. It's like up to those standards, but better, if that makes any sense, because they could put more money into them. This, from right there, that is the main thing, and that behind the head. From the front, all in from the front, I don't pay attention to that, but from the side, this all looks a mess, <laughs> to be honest with you. But when I look at him from the back, it doesn't bug me so much. It's just seeing all those panels so far away from his actual back. That's what just makes it look silly. All right, I gotta do this from the side, so I hope I sound well, and I hope this stays in focus. Well, I don't want to show off the articulation. You already saw the head. You can look up. The neck stays stationary. This part of the neck, once it connects in, so it just rotates on another joint right there. So it kind of like tilts to the side and whatnot. But it can definitely, let me move the chin, rotate about that much before it stops, which is about good enough. He doesn't really even need to look around. He's all seeing and all that stuff and whatnot. Of course the mouth still moves and whatnot, but he can look up about that much. The shoulders, since they're connected with that clip right there, you can bring that up, which makes the arms really strong, as you can imagine. Sometimes this clip has come off and it will lock on, it will come off the track and it will stop grabbing this, but that is a strong ratchet. That's like 
third party level strong. And let me shake this. I was watching a review where the person was... Oh, let me just say. I was watching Bobby's review and um, I saw his shoulders. Probably really violently shake it before they drop that. The arm can rotate at this joint. This is super crazy slow. Of course, the wings move independently. And these right here, these things hanging off, when you slide them this way, they lock into place. But um, yeah, you can move them out of the way or you could take them off if you don't want them you can rotate this it only has a single jointed elbow that bends 90 degrees the wrist the fingers have three joints oh, oh, no one two yeah three joints on each knuckle they don't spread out you do get the chug waffling right there underneath of here this thumb, hmm. I was happy that they added, let me bring this down. This is so difficult to do from where I'm sitting. I was happy that they added like an extra joint like right there. So it's not stationary like this, but the way it bends up like right here, I mean, you can get into a dynamic pose, but you can't like open graph something like that. I mean, he rotates here, and that's his grip right here. But it has one, the ball joint, and this articulation right there. And let me show him get into a fist. This is his best fist right there. The waist, does rotate. And as you can hear, really strong racks. This flap goes out, the butt flap goes out, and that flap goes out. It's a soft ratchet forward. You can go backwards. And another ratchet off there. It's not really strong, but forward, let's see. Yeah, unlike Bobby, my leg isn't strong right there. And let me try this one though. Yeah, this one seems to be stronger. And looking at his legs, I see his legs have paint on there that I never noticed. But it has swivel right here. This one's tighter. This swivel is tighter than this one. I don't really like how loose that is. The knee joint. Let's try to do this. The knee bends almost 90 degrees, but it's hindered by the panels. If the panels wasn't there, it bends actually more than 90 degrees. If I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken about that. The foot. It is crazy ankle pivot. The ankle pivot is really strong. And a rock forward that comes really far forward as you can see and it's really strong it has this toe that comes in right there and this is really strong this movement right there all that helps him stand up really well only issue i was having with standing him up without this stand up his butt is this swivel right there that that scares me now this thing is really heavy i think it's without die cast it feels heavier than terminus giganticus fan toys Omega Supreme, but you can grab here and just lift. Let me try to do this. Yeah, no, I'm grabbing the wrong thing. This is his actual part of his butt, unfortunately. Grab this and lift straight up. Oof. And this is what he's looking like <laughs> without that. He still has this protrusion right here that does not bend or fold out of the way at all. It just sticks there up against his backpack. 
And here I have him in an unassisted pose right here without that stand. So it is possible. Like I said, let me shake this. He is capable of standing there, but I do worry because this isn't really like locked into place with the ratchet, that swivel, that over time with like random shakes over time, unless you make sure you adjust them periodically, that might swivel a certain way and then he'll lose balance that I have him in. But those ankles are really, 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 really strong. And even the toe. So there you are with that. Here's the Autobot shuttle in his hand. So to let you see how big that is. And here's Galvatron standing on his crotch like he was when he transformed. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I wish that this was transparent plastic, like in a movie. In a movie, it was clearly supposed to be glass, so it didn't have to be bright or shining or anything for me. I would have still liked that. And I don't really have a problem with the, the eyes not being illuminated. It would have been nice if they did put lights in there. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I wish they were able to do that, or they did do that. I would have liked for this to be transparent plastic, but it's painted silver. But these are my little nitpicks that I'm going over right now. It still looks good to me, but I, I would have loved those things to be things that have happened. So you can see, I do have him standing straight up and down without that stand and unassisted. He seems to be fine, but I wouldn't trust it on a shelf. Here he is next to my aforementioned fan stories, Terminus Giganticus. I don't know, I don't have a scale that can weigh them, but Unicron still feels a little bit more heavy to me. Here's my extra late Christmas present, the New Age Prowl that lo looks like Toy Deco. 112 scale action figure. Here's Studio Series 86 Hot Rod, Light in the Darkest Hour. And unlike this Unicron, you can actually walk into the store and find Hot Rod if you're lucky, if your store actually stocks toys. Here's Fort Max, Kingdom Cyclonus, and Studio Series 86 Scourge right there. I don't have Galvatron because he's not out yet, officially. Here he is looking creepy scary. In robot mode. Alternate chin, robot mode. Trying to think if I missed anything before we get to these final thoughts. I know one thing, I put all the screw hole covers in there and they go in there excellently, except in this horn right there. That screw cover, I'm gonna have to glue that because it will not work. Um, my figure, unfortunate for myself, when I opened this thing, it had that little round piece broken off of it. I didn't look in the packaging to see if I have it rumbling around. That would be nice if I did, but kind of going to doubt it because it was already transformed. That probably happened while they were packaging, but it's behind there is mostly covered by this anyway. And then in planet mode, you don't see it. It does not bother me at all. It's unfortunate, but it personally does not bother me. I'm noticing with this mouth on or this chin, his teeth don't shut all the way. It's like a sneer like that, which honestly I do like. And I do like this chin to be. Here's the bottom of the stand. Whatever face parts you're not using, it can actually peg right there. Here's a comparison amazingly I almost forgot to do. But here's Supreme Armada Unicron right here, who was really cool at the time. He was like the most articulated Transformer at the time. Like, period. But he did have some things that I didn't like, like this clear, transparent chest that. And, of course, you saw the planet mode, and it didn't have, like, more spot-on feet and deco and whatnot. So, they were trying to do their own thing, and that's what they did. And look at this. This thing is almost 20 years old. I never replaced the batteries. So, that is amazing. And here's Primus. Primus is close to the same height as that Unicron. 
Final thoughts. I already knew what to expect before getting this. Let me be honest with you. Hasbro showed everything. And to be honest with you, certain things are better than what I was expecting. Like when they first brought it up, they didn't let you know that it was going to come with the different face plates and stuff until they reached the tears and whatnot. Or some of that stuff I think they just made on the fly to, to just satiate us or, or make him more alluring and more appealing. Um, things I think, other things I think are better is I did not know how these work. Now, I will say be careful. Make sure that latch stays on. Do not try to twist that shoulder without that latch on. You could possibly break it. That's my fear anyway. I didn't know the ankles would be able to rock so far forward. So far forward. The ankle articulation is way more advanced than I ever thought it would be. So those are the things that shocked me. Um, uh, everything else I knew what to expect, like the backpack and all the panels all folded up on them it's like i can't actually be mad and then to be honest with you i paid for this so so long ago this thing was crowdfunded back in 2019 it is like the second almost the second half of 2021 i'm not even worried about like the amount of money that this costs anymore but if this was an official retail figure I do think it will probably be like maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars more than it should be but then some people pay five hundred dollars for this this is 575 mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I didn't pay that much for him I pay like 330 for that so I got a good deal that people didn't listen to me about Amazon Japan so and they, if they pay more than that, then sorry to be them. I, I warned you. But anywho, uh, I think it's worth it. I don't feel disappointed at all. Only thing that that bugs me about him is the same thing that bugs me about every single big figure over 18 inches tall that I own. It is really, really hard to pose them because they're so big. It's almost like you need two people to pose them especially how tight that one hip is and that knee is tight the knee over there is tight it is very hard to get him <laughs> into a pose with ease it's like a whole exercise but I can't fault that against the toy because it's just so big now, I have the same problem with Terminus Giganticus and I had the same problems with Metroplex and Fort Max but Metroplex and Fort Max don't have the ankle articulation this guy has, so they're not even as fun as him. But I definitely like the planet mode. I don't have any problems with the planet mode. Not even the mouth repaint. I love doing that little gimmick with the opening and closing mouth. I could just sit there and just do that all day. I don't know which mode I like seeing him in more because he looks good and grand in both modes. So, yeah. I'm happy with it. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. And I'm happy that it can actually stand up without that stand. In fact, I have not brought the stand back after I took it off. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for watching this. Thank you once again, Matt the Bot Supplier, for your help in this. Until next time, T-Man978, out of here. Click, click the videos. Click the fucking videos, baby. Click. Click the videos, you should really click these videos, click, click the videos, click those fucking videos, baby, click, click the videos, you really should click those videos, click that shit.